is accelerating faster than ever, especially in the automotive industry with autonomous driving and rapid manufacturing. So I spent the last week inside of General Motors headquarters in Detroit, getting an exclusive behind the scenes look at their boldest bet for the future of cars. Right now, they're in a defining moment. Competitors like Tesla are dominating the EV market, and so GM needs to change their strategy to stay relevant to Gen Z, like me. From their high-tech wind tunnels, oh, wait, that's so much harder than I thought to push, okay, wait. to hand-built $300,000 cars, what I saw completely changed how I think about the future of cars. So is he the better driver out of the There's not a better. So the General Motors campus is based in Detroit, and here they have several different factories. On one side, you have mass production, factories that are building thousands of cars with extreme precision and a lot of automation. These are the assembly lines that put millions of cars on the road every year. But then I walked into something completely different. We're gonna see a $340,000 all-electric Cadillac and every part of the car is handcrafted at this lab. This is the Artisan Center where Cadillac makes their Celestic, a custom car that has over 130 3D printed parts and custom materials picked out by the buyer. They only make 400 of these cars every single year because they're over $300,000 and they take weeks upon weeks to actually manufacture. So he has the doors built, so we have a door module and then they get right here into the vehicle. This calibration actually does that we have all the gaps and flushness. So you see, for example, these doors, they have to fit perfectly together, plus minus 0.5 millimeter. Okay. Wow. The really interesting thing about General Motors is that they sell cars at many, many tiers. So they have cars that are like $29,000 all the way up to the handcrafted, every single piece is put by a top class engineer type of car. And they said that it takes around six months from the order being placed to actually delivering the car because every piece is hand put together. So this is the rotisserie over here. This is our active rear steer. The steer is the rear of the vehicle that makes it very parkable, very nimble considering its size. We have an active roll control system front and rear, softens the suspension, makes it compliant going down the road, but then in corners the car can actually lean into the corners. Is this the only vehicle that has that or does Cadillac have other vehicles? This is the only GM product that has active roll control. We also have a location-based ride height which will you can, when you get to a speed bump that you encounter on a daily basis, you can tell it save this GPS location. Similar to Corvette has today, um, the car will raise itself. You can save hundreds of locations. If your driveway is an issue, you can raise it, tell it to wow. save that location. And then it'll recall it next time you go to those locations. Cadillac is using this to show what EVs can be. Most people are never going to buy this car, but I think that it's like the trickle down effect where they perfect the technology at a very expensive price point, similar to what Tesla does with Roadster. And then eventually you hope that it comes down to the twenty and $30,000 cars. Because a lot of people know General Motors, but they wouldn't necessarily know that like the Silverado or Cadillac is part of the same brand. And that feels difficult to me because then it means that they kind of have to build up the brand identity of all these individual brands and then also General Motors, but they're all under the same roof and they all get designed by the same team. This is where we go through and we audit the entire vehicle. The light booth that you're in, the good part about it is it can go all the way dark so we can test all the lighting features that we've got, like the projection headlights, the tech ceiling. Um, but we can also go almost all the way right up to daylight almost. If you want, you're more than welcome to get in and play with some Oh features. my God, yes, this is so cool. Every closure is automatic, powered with radar, so you won't hit anything if it's sitting next to you. You can actually see right now if I stand here, the door won't touch me. Wow. Is this YouTube for the passenger? Yes. But it wouldn't play when you're driving, right? It would, but we have active shuttering on that screen. Okay. It's 33% of the screen, so as a driver, I can't see it once I'm in drive. The entire roof is made out of glass. Okay. We have what's called SPD, or suspended particle devices in it. And you can actually actively tint the roof or leave it see-through. So there's conversation mode as well. So if you've got someone in the back, okay. actually there's microphones in the back to project into the speakers in your headrest. No way. Right now, even though they're heavily investing in EVs, the vast majority of cars that they sell are gas-based by a huge margin. And that's where the design lab comes in. This part was insane to see close up because every curve, every line, even the way that the light reflects off the paint is meticulously designed before a single car is built. Once the design is locked into the computer, they then develop a real size clay model of it and they're able to see how the indentations reflect and interact with the light. And what was very interesting is that most of these cars never actually see the light of day. They try out insanely cool concepts here and they experiment and learn from it, but then only a very small subgroup is actually manufactured. And personally, one of the things that's the most interesting to me is thinking about how movies influence car designs and vice versa. Like a lot of times you'll see a futuristic movie like iRobot come out 20 years before something like the Tesla Cybercab comes out that looks very inspired by it. And so I actually asked the head of design at General Motors about this because I'm super curious. And he was saying that a lot of times the movie production companies will actually hire 
General Motors or other car manufacturer teams to come in and give them inspiration for design. Because for movies, they don't actually have to think about if it's practical or will work. They only have to think about how cool it is. Whereas at General Motors, they first go through the how cool it is and they model it and make an awesome car design, but then they have to test if it actually works. And a huge part of that testing is aerodynamics because that greatly impacts the car's fuel efficiency, how safe it feels, and also if it's a comfortable drive on the road. And at General Motors, they have this whole massive tunnel with oh a gosh. giant fan where they're testing exactly that. That is insane. So this, when it was built in the late 70s, was the first automotive owned wind tunnel. It was then and still is the world's largest automotive wind tunnel. Oh my, that's so much harder than I thought to push. Okay, wait. Wind tunnel test drive time. We're simulating what it would be like if you were driving on a 70 mile per hour highway to see what the acoustics are like. Jordan, can you take us down to 40 miles per hour? Going down to 40 miles per hour. And you're gonna hear it, but you're not gonna hear it. <laughs> yeah, cause now it feels so quiet. So at 40 miles an hour, it almost feels like there's no sound outside the car. So to end the test, because there's so much velocity of the wind, when the fan stops, if we did nothing, the wind would continue for 15 to 20 minutes. But what they actually do is they run the fan in reverse, so it brings the wind backwards, and then it stops it in like 30 seconds. I'm about to go into the Super Cruise Simulator where they simulate what it would be like if you were driving in a multitude of different scenarios. Before we do that, I want to tell you about a tool that I use all of the time to make these videos. Since the beginning of the year, I've been on over 20 flights to film this show, and the team and I do a lot of these video calls through Microsoft Teams. It gives you free 60-minute video calls over like the 40-minute calls that other platforms offer, and it also has chat and file sharing all built into the same app. It works on desktop and mobile, and it's backed by Microsoft who invests billions annually in security. Whether you're running a side project, organizing a team, or just staying in touch, you can sign up totally for free at aka.ms slash nothing but tech, and I'll also link that below and I'm just so stoked to be working with them. It has not always been smooth sailing for General Motors though. In 2016, GM made a huge bet on self-driving cars. They introduced a whole fleet of self-driving taxis in San Francisco to compete with Waymo, and it was supposed to be the future of autonomous driving. GM self-driving division Cruise was logging millions of miles and even planning to scale nationwide, but then things started falling apart. The biggest blow came when a Cruise robo-taxi hit and dragged a pedestrian who had previously been hit by another car on the street. Cruise had to use the jaws of life to free a pedestrian trapped underneath the Cruise vehicle on Monday night. The car initially stopped, but then it attempted to pull over, dragging the victim another 20 feet. So while the crash itself wasn't caused by a Cruise vehicle, it was not very self-aware of the environment, and it definitely made the situation a lot worse. The state revoked Cruise's permit to operate driverless cars, and then Cruise allegedly also withheld video footage of the accident from regulators. So very, very low moment for both self-driving in general, but then also General Motors specifically, especially when compared to competitors like Waymo, who have had significantly less issues. Crews also struggled with real world unpredictability. The cars frequently froze in traffic. They blocked emergency vehicles, and they even caused gridlock by stopping at intersections. So San Francisco's dense streets really exposed the weaknesses in Cruise's AI, proving that full autonomy still had major challenges. And with that, GM's ambitious plans to beat Tesla and Waymo and all the other self-driving taxis was in crisis. But instead of scrapping the entire project, GM is actually shifting their focus from creating a self-driving fleet to self-driving within your personal car. It's their technology called Super Cruise. So they had to like change up the team structure and also self-reflect on why so many things went wrong. And it seems like they're not only redoing the technology now, but they're also instead gonna just build it into personal cars versus trying to create a fleet of self-driving cars. I'm actually very bullish on self-driving cars in general. And I think that a lot of our future is going to be self-driving taxis and autonomous vehicle driving. I was in a Waymo recently and it truly felt like sitting in a piece of the future. It's unbelievable. But it's also very challenging to get fully there. What seems more realistic in the short term is that we'll have a helpful driver assist that still relies on a driver being active, but is able to help them a lot. And I got an early glimpse of that at the actual GM factory. So they're doing extensive testing now. They had a lab with a test vehicle that is surrounded by screens. So when you actually get into the car, it feels like you're driving, even though you're not moving. This is a bio sensor, it measures the rate of your sweat. Basically, oh. it'll tell us if you're excited, if you're stressed, if you're just happy, sad, and whatnot. Awesome, okay, well, I'm excited. Let's do it. Yeah. All yeah. right, this is, I'm so excited. This is the moment. Super Cruise is an automated driving system. If you're on a certain road that has Super Cruise mapping, you can drive hands-free. It's my first time ever doing this, so we'll see what it is. All right, this is the moment. God, this is wild. Oh, so it really feels like we're moving because of the screens. 
Yeah. Wow, like this could fully convince your brain yeah. that you're moving. That's wild. Yeah, so you can hit the number one button now. Okay. And then get over here, you can slow down a little bit. Then it's gonna lock and like get over a little bit further. There you go. Nice. Now you can. Oh, and then the uh, this yeah, the up. light okay. bar lights up. Now let go of your hands, okay. and you can let go of the, the, gas, the gas too. Okay. Wow, it is wild how real this looks. Like looking out the window, fully convinced that we're actually moving. And it's cool too because you can see in like the rear view mirrors, like it actually shows you the lane next to you. Now you're holding. It looks like your hand. I was. Yeah, yeah. You don't have habit. to. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Have you noticed any correlation between like age and how trusting they are? It all depends. Driving experience related differences and also people's tech experience, how well they trust tech. Okay. So now it's telling me, hey, there's a car trying to go through, but obviously yeah. we have the right of way. Yeah, but it's still, you know, it's a slightly ambiguous in terms of like, you know, you might not believe that yeah. vehicle is gonna stop, so you might you know, grab jump the in. wheel. Totally. Take, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like in a real world environment, I 100% yeah. would have grabbed the wheel at that yeah, moment. Yeah. The fact that they hooked me up to not only a sweat monitor, but then also tracked my eyes was so interesting because a lot of self-driving is not only the actual technical ability, but it's also what the person is like. Like in this facility, they bring in people that are very, very good drivers, people that really, really trust technology and are willing to give up all of their autonomy to it, and then people that do not trust technology at all, and they see how they react. Because ultimately, if self-driving becomes mainstream, it's going to be in everyone's life not just the tech savvy people's life. And so the technology not only needs to be great, but it also needs to be something that people will trust. Simulation done, walking into the control room to hear my results and have them grade my driving ability. This feels like mission impossible yes. level control room. <laughs> so sick. Yeah, so the whole time you're in the vehicle, we can obviously see what, what you're seeing. So what, at a greater level of detail, which I'm going to compare and contrast yeah, a little bit. Yeah, please, wait, Miles, uh, get the shot. If get you don't there. mind, <laughs> I'm going to compare and contrast Check you. Check YouTuber, Miles. Uh, no, no. You're, you're a little different. He's obviously been exposed to Super Cruise before. So is he the better driver out of the There's two not a better. <laughs> <laughs> you're different, um, which is what we want. Your foot was here the whole time. His foot was literally on the left side here, like Whoa. not even close. Your eyes were all over the place. Okay, interesting. One of the things we're definitely gonna look for is, you know, where are your hands? Both of you were pretty comfortable, actually. We see a lot of, sometimes we'll see participants do the hover. Like, yeah, the hover like, hand. We're looking for, hey, did you take control? If you did take control, was it com were, were you safe in taking control? We don't want you to have the, like, yeah. hit the brakes, oh my gosh. You're the best, thank yeah. you so much. Spending this last week inside of General Motors made one thing very clear to me. The automotive industry isn't just about engines and wheels anymore, it's about who can make the smartest machine. I think this next deck is going to be defined by incredible infotainment and software systems, but also self-driving and autonomy. And I'm so excited about it. Thank you so much for watching this one, and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one. Bye.